Okay, we're going to look at the relationship between fractions, decimals, and percents that represent the same value. Some will be bigger than one, an improper fraction, or a number that includes at least an integer greater than one as part of what it is. Others will be proper fractions. They can be negative, but we won't get so much into the negatives. We're going to look now at how to relate to their different scales. A fraction represents division. So you've got to know that a fraction, when you see it, is representing division. So that's maybe why people already don't like it. They don't like division, they don't like fractions. They're tied together. Where the numerator is the product The numerator is the product, which is the result of the multiplication that got us here. It's the biggest of the numbers in most cases. And the denominator, which is the bottom of the fraction, the numerator is the top, is the divisor. It's the number you divide by. Okay, so you start with your numerator and divide by your divisor. That's what any fraction does. Any decimal. represents a whole number divided by 100. What? Yes. Divided by 100. So it's always over 100. Per cent, per means over, and cent means 100. Dollars and cents, 100 cents and a dollar. Century, 100 years. Cent is over 100, so per cent is a number that goes over 100. a whole number divided by a power of 10. That's true. To match its number of decimal places. So this would be challenging because if I said, I want you to define a fraction, oh, sorry, this was percent. I have to change that to purple. But uh, it would be very challenging for someone to say, give me, uh, to answer this, give me a definition of a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. But don't say it's the thing that, right? Or it's when you. Okay, because that means that you've memorized what to do because enough times you've heard it loudly enough to have it stick to you, but you don't understand what it is. A fraction represents division. That's the key to get us started. Where the numerator is the product and the denominator is the divisor. You start with the numerator, divide by what's in the bottom, whether it's bigger than one or smaller than one, an improper or proper fraction. Any percent represents a whole number divided by 100, and then it turns into a decimal where any decimal represents a whole number divided by a power of 10, 10 is important, to match its number of decimal places. If we have 10 fingers, I am pretty sure that's why we have 10 for our decimals. Okay, because we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, start over. Right, 10. That's what causes the decimal point. Des, D-E-C-I, is from deci, which is the base word for 10 in Latin. And so 10 is the key because if you're dividing by 10, 100, 1,000, a million, 10 trillion, the decimals that you write for digits won't change, but where the point is to say how big they really are will. And that's what dividing by a power of 10 or multiplying by a power of 10 will also do. It'll take a number like 15, multiply by a billion, you got 15 billion. It still has a 1 and a 5 before the zeros get there. Take a number like 47 and you divide it by 10,000. It's going to have the 4 and the 7 they're behind some decimal point zero, uh, decimal point and some zeros. Because the decimal point tells you the scale. How big of a use am I doing for this, the digit four and seven? Is it 47? Is it 470? Is it 470 million? Or is it point triple O four seven? 
they're all four sevens, right? The tens have caused it to move. Dividing by it makes it smaller. Multiplying by tens makes it bigger. Here's what we're going to do. My rules now for getting these. You have that. That's great to know. Probably need some space to put the rules about how we're going to get through it. So you might have this thing like, oh, move the decimal twice to the left, move the decimal twice to the right. Why? Those are powers of 10 moves, true. The digits stay the same, true. But do you know what's going on? Here's what's going to happen. Getting fractional form. Okay, number one, if you have this, put a decimal over 100. Why do I have that in my mind today? If it's, I should know, percent. Percent is our guy. Percents are used, I like to say, because people are more comfortable hearing those numbers. Okay? If I want to say 37% of students in this class are expected to get an A, people prefer to hear that than to hear 0.37 of the students in this class are expected to get an A or 37 out of 100 students in this class are expected to get an A. So what we have is percent sounds like a whole number, and people are like, come on, I hate fractions, I hate decimals. Give me a number I can live with. 37% will be like that. So percents are really to make people that aren't comfortable with decimals and fractions have an opportunity to work with them anyway. 37. Now 37 over on, come on, man, percent. I grabbed the number for that. Okay. Put a percent over 100. A is put the percent over 100, or B, put the, yeah, you're going for a fraction, you're going to put the decimal over its proper power of 10. That's going to make a decimal, and then you're going to reduce the fraction. Now, reducing the fraction is not something that a lot of people love. But you'll make a fraction, and your job is to reduce it. So if you start with the decimal, put it over 100. You might have to multiply top and bottom by a power of 10 to get the decimals out of the top. You'll do that. On the bottom, you put the decimal over its proper power of 10. right? You're going to put it over 1, and then you're going to multiply by powers of 10 so that you don't have decimals sitting inside the fraction. You get decimal form. I'm not going to move the decimal and say, move it this way, just trust me, and I'll yell it at you if you don't remember. To get decimal form, number one, A. Uh, let's see, to get decimal form, make the percent a fraction. over 100. That's how we do it. We're going to put all our percents over 100. Number two, and if you have the percent, you do that. And step to, um, how else would you want to do? Oh, make a decimal over it's power of 10, of 10. What that means is we're going to use multiplying by 10, 100, 1,000. If we have a decimal in there, we're going to multiply by enough tens to get it away from having a decimal in the middle of this mess. Long divide until it A terminates, gets a zero remainder that's ending, like terminal, it's over. Or B repeats. And repeating decimals are kind of annoying, but they do happen. And then you put a bar over the repeating portion. Part of what you have, portion, part, portion. Right? You're going to put that decimal there, and you're going to put a bar only over the digits that repeat. To get any percent, multiply 
or fraction or decimal by 100. The percent is O to get a percent, you would have, sorry, multiply. To get a percent from, to get a percent from, though. get percent form A multiply your decimal or fraction by 100 So if you multiply your decimal by it, you get right to it. If you have your fraction, fractions should be reduced. Let's do a couple of these, then the board will be full, then I'll take down the space. We'll fill the rest of the board with work, and we'll stop at that point. Let's look at what we've got. I've got 0 0.23. That's a decimal. And then we'll go for... Finding out what the fraction is that goes along with it, and we'll go for the percent. And I don't want to say, oh, move the decimal to the left, to the right. I don't do that stuff. I don't call it that way. Percents look bigger. They represent the same number. They have the same digits as the decimal will. So what we have here is we have a decimal of 0.23. I want it to be a percent. So to get a percent, you should multiply your decimal by 100 to get it up to that size. So what we've got is we take our 0.23, multiply by 100, make it look bigger. It's still going to be 23, and it's going to have this percent sign on it. Now, 23% is a fraction. That means we go with 23 over 100. That's what percent means, put it over 100. That fraction is done. Now we got the other two. The ones we got for answers, I'm going to put in red boxes. But what we do is after we've got the percent, we put the number over 100 and we're ready to work on our fraction. So the decimal seems to be the spot where I want to start. 3.48. Let's multiply 3.48 by 100. It's 100%, really. So the percent sign means something. When you multiply that by 100, the 3, the 4, the 8, they all stay there. But twice, you move the decimal to make it look bigger. And you get 3, 4, the 8 percent. It's over 100 percent, completely legal. Percents can go over 100. The stock market is now about 1,800 percent of what it was in, I think, the 1980s. It's 18 times as big. So that's fine. You can have percents go over 100 if you're bigger than you started with. Now our percent has gotten us 348, and we want to get our fraction. So now we take our 348, and we put that over 100. We can't live with that as our final answer. So it doesn't divide, the 348 doesn't divide by 5 or 10 or 25 or 50 or any of those things, but it does appear to divide by 4. So if I divide this by 4, I'm going to get 25. And I know there's no fives in the three, the 348. That's how I know that I'm not going to divide anything more into the 25. And I divide this, I get 75 and 48. It's going to get me 12. I get 87. How? You took 348, and you divided that thing by 4. There's none in the 34, but you got 8 of them here. 32, 28 gets you 7. And you got 87 over 25. So what we're trying to do is if we can get that decimal, we can easily get the percent by making it look bigger twice. That's what 100% does, times 100 with the percent sign. And then we can come around and get the fraction. But maybe sometimes we start with the fraction. So I'm going to put some new ones up there for you. And we're going to try to stick to this idea. Percent goes over 100. So if you know the percent, put over 100, and you're on your way to having 
for sure the fraction. We just got to get it not to have decimals in the middle anymore. And then you want the decimal, you go ahead and you do the long division. So the decimal does seem like a really good basis from driving some of this stuff, but we'll see what we get. It's like 75%. And besides 75%, we'll look at 250%. We'll look at one more percent. Nah, we won't look at one more percent. We'll do some fraction stuff later. But we're going to start with those two. We need answers. All right, 75%. Now, this wants to be a fraction, and this wants to be a decimal the fraction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 75 and I'm going to put it over 100. Divide by 25 and divide by 25. They both divide by 25. I'll come out of here with the fully reduced 3 quarters. Do I want my decimal? Sure. Now I'll take my small reduced fraction, right? I'll take my reduced fraction and get after 3 divided by 4. So if I do 3 divided by 4, it's going to bring something back. It's going to bring a smaller looking 75%. Because I had 75 over 100, and here's what happens. 3 doesn't divide by 4, but 30 has some in there. It's got, let's see, 7 of them. 7 times 4 is 28. So now I get 2, I go for 0 here. 20, I get 75, right? This is done. What happened? It's a smaller looking 75 by two decimal places. Decimals are smaller looking than their corresponding percents, but they look an awful lot alike. 7 and 5 in a row, 7 and 5 in a row. That is 75 to over 100, which leads me to that fraction. The 75 here looking smaller is 0.75. You may know what that's doing there. 250%. 250 divide by 100. Divide by 50. Divide by 50. They both divide by 50, so you've got to get all the way through it. Before you get this thing to be 5 over 2, take your 5, divide it by 2, 5 point, right, 5 right here, 2 times 2 is 4, you get 1 left, bring down to 0 from 5.0, 2.5, you may recognize the 250 and the 2.50 because it's looking two decimal places smaller with the 2 and the 5 in order. Now we're going to get some fractions to start, here we go, 3 over 8. 3 over 8, we have to get that thing into decimal form. So I'm going to jump over here and I'm going to do my 3 which is smaller than my 8, so I'm going to have a decimal to get going. 3.0. Can't do 4, i got to go 3. 3 times 8 is 24. Here I'll get 6. Right, I go like that. I get 6. 3.00, that is what my 3 was. Let's get 60. I can't get 8 out of it. i got to get 7. 7 times 8 is 56. All right, 4. 3.00 helps me get a 40 there. When I subtract the 40, because I used a 5, I get this. It's decimal 375. The percent is going to be 375 also, but it's going to look two decimal places bigger because of the 100. It's not going to look like 0.37. It's going to look like that and that are whole parts, and I'm going to get 37.5%. Notice the similarities of the digits between the decimals and the percents. The percents are what people would be more comfortable with. You certainly don't want to say 0.375 of the people in this election voted for, I better stop. But they might say 37.5% of the people in this election voted for that individual. Because people are more comfortable starting with integers than they are starting with decimals. They represent the same thing. Let's go for 13 over 4. 13 over 4 is an improper fraction. There's nothing wrong with that. You got your 13 and your 4. If I go with a 3 here, I already see that I get 12 out of there, but I got 1 left. I don't put R4 or 1 fourth. I now go for this. I say, all right, that's 13.0. I'm going to take that and make a 10. That's going to make me get 2 times 4 for 8. 10 minus 8 is 2. Another 0 for 13.00 gets me to the 20 that I need to get rid of 20 with my 5. So I'm ready here, 3.25. I have 3, 2, 5. But I want it to look two decimal places bigger. Percents look bigger. So that's going to be putting my decimal right after the 5. I don't even need to write it, 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 325%. 
Okay, if your college fund grew up by became 325 percent of what it was when you were 10 years old, now it's much bigger. If it was ten thousand dollars, it's now thirty-two thousand five hundred dollars. So it can have that much growth. Percents can exceed 100 because numbers can go above one. 14 over 9. People don't like this one. I get it. Because we're going to see a repeating decimal. Therefore, we've got to determine where to cut the decimal off when it repeats. So when I take 14 over 9 and I start to do my division here, 14 divided by 9. All right, there's 1 in there. So I take my 9 and I get 5. Right, that's 14 minus 9 gets me 5. One more there, one more there gets me 5. 14.0, so behind the 1 point, I get this, 50. Can't get 6, I'll go 5. 5 times 9 is 45. There's another 5. That 5 repeated is going to cause another 50, demand another 5, and I'm going to get 1.55555. That makes this decimal 1.5 repeating. Now, if you want your decimal to be written that way, you go ahead and you write your 1.5555, you know, as many as you need, and you see that this is supposed to have the decimal after the 1, but it's got to look two moves bigger, so it's got to look like this, and then I don't need to have two 5s repeating, and I have 155. What happened is the first two 5s got me to the decimal, and then I repeated the decimals after the third 5. I went 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. You only highlight the report, repeated part of the decimal, so those first two fives would come out of here. Because if you wrote it instead like this, five, 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 and repeated it, then you moved your decimal point to behind the second five, you'd be okay to have the repeat. However, when we're back here, since the fives have already started repeating, we write it like that. <coughs> How about 13? Uh, how about 3 over 16? I'm going to take the top off here. And we're going to start working on 3 over 16. But the idea is the decimal that you create from long division can lead you right to where you got to be for your percent. So we've got 3 over 16. 3 divided by 16, that came to us. They want us to find a decimal and a percent. Now sometimes you can use your calculator instead of long dividing by hand, but we need to work on long dividing because it's on our upcoming exam. So we have our 3, and we divide by 16. Well, 3 can't divide into 16, but maybe 30 can handle a 16. It does only have one of them in there. 1 times 6 is 6, 1 times 1 is 1. We do our subtractions, this is 20 and 10. 10 minus 6 is 4, 2 minus 1 is 1. I got 14 is smaller than 16. And positive. That one is correct. Now I got to do 14 divided by 16. Ugh, why don't I treat it as like 14 di divided by, I don't want to call it a 1, I can't jam a 14 in that spot. I might as well divide it by a 2 and see if I got a 7 to work. Might not, but I'm using 3.00 now. 7 times, so now I've got this into 140. 7 times 6 is 42. This is my 4 from 42. 7 times 1 is 7. I get 11. This is what can happen when you do long division. This will turn into 30 and 10. I do 10 minus 2 for 8 and 3 minus 1 for 2, 28. Seven's too small. I'm not an idiot. Well, that's my wife sometimes. But the idea here is 7 was too small. We had 140 and 7 was too small. So I'm going to go for 8. If you went for 8 earlier, you get there quicker. But your answer is no better than someone who went 7's too small. Now let me try 8. 8 times 6 is 48, put the 4 over here. 8 times 1 gets you the 12. And when you get 12, you'll see that 0 can't subtract 8, so I've got to go down to 30 and 10. 10 minus 8 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1, 12 is smaller than 16. i got some more work to do, because now i got to turn it into 3.00 and get 120. Now 12 divided by 2 might cause me to go for 6. 6 times 6 is 36. That's my 3 from 30. 6 times 1 is going to get me 6, and I get 96. Okay, now when I come back here, I'm going to get 24. What's going to happen? This is going to become 11, and that's going to become 10. 4 and 4 make that have a 4. 11 minus <coughs> 9 gets me 2. 24 is too much left over. I didn't take enough off my 120. 
six is no good. Let's go up by 120. Got to go higher than six for seven. Really? Yes. Seven times six is 42. Okay, four is here from 40. Seven times one is seven. Pick it up for 11. 112. So now I turn this 20 into 10 and 10. 10 minus that is eight. And now I have an eight down there, which is positive, and I gotta go one more digit. I have to go to 3.0000 to get this done. But 80, I'm gonna try eight divided by two is four. Let me go to five. Four is gonna be too small. <coughs> if you try four, you'll see it's too small, but I'll try five. Five times six, 30, there's my three. Five times one is five, gets me 80, I got it, zero. That answer is 1.8. Oh, sorry, 0.1875. <coughs> it didn't repeat. It eventually got to the 5, and it hit the 0 remainder. What do a lot of people say? They say, stick with it, right? You don't have to stick with it forever. It will repeat, or it will terminate. Because if it shows up with the number again, then it's going to start that cycle of repetition. But 1875, it doesn't have... The first two digits need to be made into whole numbers. We've got 18.75, and that has a percent sign on it. One more that starts with it. Now, what if you maybe notice is that I'm working on your long division as part of this, so you can get a little more work on long division. We're not looking to have the calculator do that for us just yet. <clears throat> I want five and three elevenths. Five and three elevenths. The five is five, and I need to work on the three elevenths. So five and three elevenths is good the way it is as a fraction, and I need to see what this is gonna do for me in terms of a decimal and a percent. So I know I have my five, and I set up my decimal, and I start working on my three elevenths. 3 divided by 11. So 3.0 is 30. That'll have 2 of them in it. 2 times 11 is going to get me 22. That'll get me nicely. 2 times 1 is, uh, that gets me, 30 minus 22 is the same as 10 minus 2 gets me 8. 8, I can use a 7. 7 times 1. So I turn this into 80. I go to 3.00. I turn this into 80 and I do subtract by 77. Now here comes a 3. All right, then, that's 30. Let me go for what that's going to have for me. It's going to have two of them. Oh, wait a minute. If I do 2 times 11, I get 22. Here comes the 8 again. 7. And it's going to cycle. Do you see what's repeating? It's 27, 27, 27, 27. That means that it's going to go like that forever. It's 27 repeating. 5.272727272727. The 5 is still there. What else does that look like? It could look like 5... Point two seven and then repeating two sevens beyond that. So when I move my decimal two places, it gets me 527% and also 27 is the repeating decimal. And that's how we do our fractions, decimals, and percents. You'll see some of that in homework, right? You'll see it a lot in homework um, with the decimals and percents and some of the long division tied into homework one, two, three, four, five. So that's the end of our lesson here for lecture. 6B, fractions, decimals, percents.